Hi, everybody. I want to thank you all for being here, uh, whether you're in person or watching uh, through Facebook. So I'm Andy Summers from 92.5 XTU, and we were all so deeply affected by the deaths of troopers Brandon Siska and Martin Mack, as well as the pedestrian that they were helping along I-95 back in March. It wasn't long after that accident that Raz was talking to Kip Moore and the subject came up because honestly, at that time, that was all any of us could talk about. Um, and immediately Kip said, we've gotta do something for the families. And so here we are to celebrate the lives, the service, and the ultimate sacrifice of troopers Brandon Siska and Martin Mack. So I wanna thank Kip Moore um, for being so generous with his time to take a detour from his tour to be with us in person today. Um, and we are surrounded by family members of Trooper Siska and Trooper Mack. First of all, we have Stephanie Mack with us and also Captain McShay, as well as um, several other brothers and sisters from the S Pennsylvania State Police. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, and thank you for allowing us to get some insight that you can provide. We have a unique opportunity to understand this incident from a completely different perspective today, um, and we thank you for that. We also want to thank all of you for watching at home or at work or wherever you are, because this is one of the best things about our community, is that we are country strong. And with your help, we are going to be raising money today to help those families who lost their fathers and their husbands way too soon. So um, let's get started. If you're watching at home, just remember there is a link that you can click so that you can make a donation and all the money is going to benefit um, the families, the Mac and, and Siska families today. So um, let me start with you, Captain. When we think about that night of the accident, there were so many if onlys, right? If only Mr. Oliveras had a ride home from the park or from the airport that day. If only that driver had stopped drinking or had taken another route after she had been pulled over. Tell us what it is from your perspective, from your side of things. Take us through that night. Well, for everyone here and like all the state police, it's just devastating. I mean, honestly, you do see how a series of events had to come together for this to happen the way it did. I mean, there were so many different, like you said, what ifs, but even beyond that, just, just circumstances that had to fall into place for, for this to happen and you know that the tragedy to occur it was devastating and you know as you went through the investigation because you know I mean obviously we have the personal aspect with the families and getting through that but you know we have to do an investigation and go through all the details and, and you put those those pieces together and just saw how it came together and, and, and the way it way it happened it just it blows your mind yeah it really does um, Stephanie, I feel bad asking you questions because I know I'm going to be weeping within a moment and, and I applaud you for being so strong and being able to be here and, and give us your perspective on all of this. Um, so talk to us, talk to us about your husband, talk to us about Marty. Okay, um, so Marty was like the kind and gentle giant. Um, opposites truly attract, he was silent and my reputation beholds me, <laughs> I am not. Um, I met him at college. Um, we were both in the Greek system, so he was SAE, I was Phi Mu. And um, senior year, it was just one of those things, and we started dating, and graduation hit, and you know, usually when you graduate, you're like, eh, it's not gonna last, like, smile and nod. Um, we were in it, and it was just one of those things, like, you kind of just knew right then and there um, that you met your person, like, literally your other half. Um, so we got married in 2013, and uh, then we got pregnant with our first, uh, Olivia, in 2014, and that's when he went to the State Police Academy. Um, he left in November. I delivered in December, like, right before Christmas. And um, he missed her birth by an hour and 12 minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Fast forward four years. He almost missed Rowan's birth because he was getting a mushroom thin crust pizza in the lobby. 
So there's that. <laughs> um, I mean, he was soft spoken. Um, and hungry. And hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Mushroom thin crust pizza. Um, I mean, he was the reason I actually ate. He knew how to cook, and I, I don't. So if it's not in a microwave or it's not in a fast food line, I, I don't eat. Um, he was a good guy. I mean, he taught. He was very tolerant and patient. I'm impatient. Um, I am tolerant. I have to be, but um, I'm slowly learning patience. Um, but obviously, like the person who can control me the best is gone. Um, Rowan turned three on the eighteenth of March. He was killed three days later. The 20th, he tucked the girls both into bed, and he never came home. And that's pretty much it. So being the wife of, of a trooper, um, I guess it's something you think that you you do you can you prepare yourself for this? Is it something that's in the back of your mind? I don't know the right way to ask this because I can't even imagine being in your shoes. So Okay. Marty got hit by drunk drivers a lot. <laughs> Let's start like uh, in 2014 we almost miscarried Olivia before he even went into the state police academy. It was Mother's Day. We got rear-ended by a drunk driver. <laughs> First one. Um, 2018, I was pregnant with Rowan. Uh, his gun belt took the hit. Drunk driver. Uh, Marty got hit in 2021. Um, not a drunk. Pursuit. Pursuit. But he still got injured. So that was November 11th. Uh, he went back March 16th. So um, just a timeline there. Um, every time he got hit, every time there was a trooper death, um, Landon Weaver was his first funeral. Um, he had to go all the way out to, to support Macy. And, um, we talked about everything and who do you want carrying you? What readings do you want? Our church isn't big enough. Where do you want it? Um, how much can I change if people make me angry who can I pull um, we discussed how I needed to act <laughs> whatever <Don't worry. laughs> like, um, I would think in a situation like that there are no rules for how you act but but it's I mean, also there's there's a lot of formalities. Correct. Right? Like that's that's something else. So I mean, I've gone through the process of of doing my will with my husband and that sort of thing. And it's that is heartbreaking and and right. So you basically had to do all that and make all those arrangements so in when, the event of Yeah, when he got hit in November, I uh, I said, We really need to think about like what we're doing. Um, like can we go look like, what cemetery do you want to be buried at? Steph, we're not going that far down the rabbit hole. Let it go. And I was like, okay, it's not a smart move. We just need to be in place. Um, I had to make the call uh, on where he got buried. And even though it was a state of shock, my brain never turned off. Um, like, my logic as to why he got buried where he did still stands. Um it takes a lot to be a trooper wife. Um, and I know a lot of my friends will attest to it. Um, but the show has to move on and upholding a legacy and representing Marty and Brittany representing Brandon's legacies are something that we have to do. And unfortunately it's so public and, um, you know, the worst part is that, you know, my seven and a half year old and my three year old are in the limelight and that's a hard pill to swallow. 
Um, but it's just something we have to do. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for that. Um, Kip, talk to us about why it was so important. Why did you act so quickly to get involved in this? Well, for me, um, I get involved with a lot of things, um, and I stay quiet about it. Um, I feel like that's the that's the beautiful part of, you know, Raz knew that I've been touring for two straight weeks, and I got home yesterday at twelve, and then flew here last night, and I got to leave to go straight back onto him here. You know, I'm just kind of upside down all the times, but this is when it's like um, you feel like what you're doing holds weight and it's um it's impactful and i've always just felt like um i've been so blessed in my life so you know i want to do as many things as i can to um shed light on things that i care about you know i learned a long time ago that i can't um i can't help everything but when there's little things that you know in in my pocket of the earth where i hear about things happen or whatever that i can get involved with then that's when I like to take action. Um, and that's what I always encourage people that follow my page to do. Um, and so when Raz was telling me about what happened, um, man, what a, just one of the craziest stories. And I just, um, you know, the fact that they're trying to get this drunk driver off the road, they get a call to go help somebody else out that's in need and they lead to go do that and then get struck by the person that they told to go straight, I, I just, it just uh, it struck me. Um, my brother's been in law enforcement for, I would say, about 15 years. And I know um, what goes on behind the scenes. I know what you guys face, what, you're, what you deal with, the anxiety of it, all those things. And if we're just being honest, you know, um, I get really angry at what a thankless job it is all the time. So when Raz told me about it, um, I feel like this was my chance to um, say thank you in a way that, you know, that, that I could, that I could, you know, somehow help and try to encourage other people that follow my page to, um, or they're even watching this now through the live stream to just, you know, we always love to tweet and we love to post about thoughts and prayers, but like this is a time that you can actually do something instead of just talking all the time. I get tired of all the talking. Um, so my thing is, is, and I know that a lot of people are strapped for money. This is a, you know, a time when a lot of people have lost jobs and this and that. But, you know, I just think about my pages alone and there's, you know, the millions combined. If everybody just gives a dollar, gives two, gives five, give whatever you can. Um, you know, when all that's added up, it'll make a difference. It'll make a difference in their lives and their kids' lives. And it's a way to say thank you for the people that are watching our back every day in such a thankless way. So, yeah, um, that's why I'm here. And that's why I just wanted to let the people that I knew that, that follow my page, when there's things I care about, they know that I don't shuck and jive them. I don't try to get them to get involved with things that I'm not truly passionate about. And I think they know that. And, uh, yeah, so this is something I'm passionate about. And this is something that... I know how tough you guys' job is, and I know how thankless it is. Mm -hmm. But um, I appreciate the heck out of you guys. So, yeah, this is me being here doing whatever I can. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And again, um, if you're watching from home or work or whatever, you can just click that link to make that donation. We've made it pretty simple for you. Um, and we thank you for your support. So uh, this is uh, you know, kind of for all of us just to kind of discuss this accident um, back in March happened at the tail end of a tumultuous couple of years with fighting between civilians and police officers. There had been so much in the news um, with Black Lives Matter and you, you hear stories and you see videos and, and the trials and all of this and it was one of those situations and um, Kip, I think that you feel similarly to me, but I'm not going to put words in your mouth. Um, it was it was a time of conflict for me because I would hear about things that had happened with George Floyd, and I would get, be nauseated at the thought of it, but then afraid to say something because I didn't want to feel like I was trying to criticize police officers 
who I have been raised to, you know, appreciate and adore. My, my dad um, was a Marine, and so anyone in uniform is someone that, you know, I was taught to respect, and I do. But I, I think that there are, you know, the uniform, there are many different people that wear uniforms, right? And you can't always control decisions. We're humans, right? So sometimes I make a bad decision. Sometimes everyone, you know, everyone has that chance to make a bad decision, to do something wrong, to make a mistake. Um, so, Kip, I know that you had spoken out about that on your social media a little bit, just kind of seeing you had a, a, an awesome video um, where you had two little kids playing in a park. Yeah, I did that years ago before there was, you know, before there was a movement. I've been, you know, that's a whole other topic, but, yeah, I've been speaking out, you know, long before it was the trend, you know, of, you know, the hate in this world, right. disenfranchised communities and things like that. And I've, you know, but, you know, without going into all that, it's, I also understand what it takes, not personally, but through my brother, through a lot of close friends that do this for a job, the level of anxiety and what's behind the curtain and um, how difficult it is to do this job day in and day out and what that takes. So I think with me really having a bird's eye view of that and, you know, I try to be someone of, um, I don't get swayed by people. I don't get swayed by what the crowd's doing. Um, I use my own judgment for a lot of things. And when it comes to this, this is just something I've always had, whether it's our military, whether it's our police force, uh, state troopers, sheriffs, um, I just know that this is not a, an easy job, and there's a lot of pressure behind it. There's a lot of pressure situations, and you know, of course, the light is going to be shown on law enforcement when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. But we don't shine the light enough when the thousands of things that go right, right and right. what they do day in and day out, and that's what makes me angry. Right. No, absolutely. So, um, Captain McShay, talk to us about about you growing up. What like it has has it always been a dream of yours to go into the force? Has it, you know, like and, and talk to us on behalf of of everyone else that's here. Is it everything that you expected? Is it more? Is it less? So the dream was not to become a police officer. Actually, my father's a Philadelphia police officer. It was for thirty plus years. Um, as a kid, you see the the overnight shifts, being away from the families, missing out on some things, and it kind of sways you away from it. Mm -hmm. um, but then as I got into college, it kind of became the calling and, and it was the way I, I decided to go. Uh, my father was a big influence on me becoming a state trooper. I mean, I, I was obviously looking at other police departments and his big thing was, you know, try to get the state. I like, try to do something a little bit, a little bit different from what he did, do a different path. Um, but then as far as this job itself, I mean, I'll, I'll tell all these guys, I, mean, I love my job. The state police has treated me better than you know, I ever expected. It's given me more opportunity than I've ever expected. I mean, even with my current position and being able to work with these guys that are here today, I mean, I consider it a blessing. You know, um, no, it's just, it's a wonderful profession. And, you know, when I speak on behalf of the guys here, I think we all do with the purpose of helping. I mean, I don't think anybody gets into this without the understanding that the majority of your job is to help people. You respond to calls, you respond to calls for service, you show up to people in distress. You know, it's not a go and you know, do some paperwork. I mean, obviously we do a lot of paperwork, but I mean, at the heart of it, everything you do is responding to somebody else in distress and trying to help them out, whether it be an accident, um, you know, being the victim of a crime, your vehicle being disabled on the side of the road. I mean, the heart of the whole job is to help people. And I, I think everyone gets into that knowing that, so I think everyone has good intentions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and we thank you all and applaud you all for the jobs that you're doing. I think that it speaks volumes just seeing you here today. So I thank you for all of that. Um, so Stephanie, from your perspective, I mean, you, I, I would imagine that Marty was a criminal justice major or something in school, so you knew going into it. But what is most surprising from your perspective um, as the wife? So we were both crim majors in college. Um, he did criminal justice, I did criminology. Um, he also did split with history, uh, so he didn't have to do all the hard classes that I took. <laughs> he had you for that. No, he just didn't feel like taking them. <laughs> There's a difference. He was smart, I was not. Um, so when we were graduating, he got, our graduation date was 
May 21st, 2010, I think. So it's ironic that he graduated from the State Police uh, Academy on May 22nd, um, 2015. So when we were graduating, he got the call from Maryland State Police, like, hey, you're invited to do your physical. Um, come down, and then we can go from there. He said, is there any way I can reschedule? Like, I'm supposed to graduate, like, that college that day. Like, I would like to walk. They go, you have to make the decision walk or come to the physical he goes I choose to walk at graduation so Maryland State was off the plate he didn't want it anyway um no offense (laughs) sorry (laughs) let me preface that sorry no offense um he really wanted PA um and there's the waiting list at the time a long waiting list (laughs) um so he was patient um as you could be And then when we find out we were pregnant with Olivia, that was the 15th of April. He got invited to do his physical on the 19th of April, that same week. So once he passed his physical, I was like, well, I'm having a baby without (laughs) you. And then we went to the background check, and he was fine. Um, Obviously, nothing was wrong. Um, It was just a physical. Um, Going crim-based, you kind of just know what's in the path. Um, But when he got the call to essentially start and we kind of knew like we were together for it forever, I just stayed back. I didn't do anything um, crim-based. It was fine because essentially one of us had to be the parent at home Mm -hmm. and hold down the fort. The fort came and I was the ringleader. What was your plan? I slept through my FBI interview. Okay. That was the plan. I was supposed to take the interview. It was finals. I slept Everything through it. Everything happens for a reason. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. So, uh, woohoo. <laughs> so the fort came. I became the ringleader. I call it riot season. COVID hit. And I was going nuts with two kids at home because they couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Marty went to work, came home, and I was like, I don't know where you're taking your clothes off, but just don't bring them in the house. <laughs> just do something. Um, it was weird. But I mean, like, I remember there was one conversation, and he was on top of Belmont um, guarding the house, is what he called it. And uh, he goes, I think I'm going to en- enlist in the Army. I was like okay I was like midlife crisis he goes no I'm just I feel like I need to do more I was like aren't you doing enough right now like you're on top of Belmont put your phone away (laughs) so that was a whirlwind that was four months he went from I think I'm gonna do it to shipping out to Fort Sill that September and then he graduated and um, that was December. He came home, and then he started at OCS that January. What is OCS? Officer Candidate School. Yeah. And um, he was supposed to commission. Next. What does that mean? Commission, become an officer okay. of the Army. Sorry, I don't know all your words. <laughs> Sorry. I was not a crim major. <laughs> Barely a communications major. <laughs> so um, he was supposed to commission with the Army in August. So obviously he's not, um, but... Here we are. Yeah. Um, how are your girls? And and you know what? I can't. I don't want to overlook Brittany. So before no, we no, get no, to definitely. your girls, um, talk to us about Brittany Siska. She's doing well. She's doing well. I She's mean, about to have a baby. Expecting their first child here in the coming weeks. So I mean, a very pregnant woman who's yes. um, putting a lot of time in. We had a prelim last week. She made it down for that. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, had some milestones and some difficult firsts come up in the last couple of weeks, um, but she's she's getting through that. You know, she's definitely she's, she's a strong woman with a strong family and a strong support system. Yeah, um, and she's persevering, but uh, I think uh, very uh, ready to have that child. She's, yeah, she, she's definitely ready she's to ready. Uh, move on. And, it's and tough in the summer. Very yeah. much so. Yeah, yeah I good. Don't her being that <laughs> in the summer. Um, so tell me about your girls. All right. So uh, Liv is going into second grade. Um, Rowan is going to preschool in the fall, hopefully. Um, but 
just like Marty and I, they're polar opposites. Um, Rowan is outspoken. I'm so sorry for the world. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to be two of me. Um, and then Liv is incredibly smart. Like she's like Marty. She's reserved. Um, she can itemize her feelings and like put them away when she needs to. Um, they're doing as best as they can, Mm -hmm. uh, just like all of us, Brittany included and trying to keep them out of the limelight. Just like I think Brittany's going to do with Bryn. Um, you know, just try to let them have as normal of a life as possible, whatever this normal is. Um, if there will ever be normal. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the adjustment period is still taking time to hit, uh, but they got a busier schedule than I do. Liv starts camp soon. They do dance soon. And I'm just going to be literally a taxi. I'm thinking and maybe hoping that they're young enough that this isn't something that's brought up to them often. Or is it? So I had to get my car painted uh, because Olivia knew the color of the car that struck Marty. Um, she wouldn't get in my car for a while until I told her I was getting it painted or until I told her that there was time to get it painted. Um, like I said, for a seven and a half year old, she's really bright. Um, there are, uh, my three year old is a little too blunt. Um, and the, some of the guys can tell you, um, she will tell you to your face, don't die. My daddy died, um, in that uniform. So, and that's a three-year-old. So, unfortunately, um, my three-year-old is taking it the hardest. Uh, Marty used to come home and sleep with her in the morning because she would co-sleep. Uh, don't mom shame me. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> um, but, like, she would cuddle with them all the time. And uh, her cuddle buddy's gone, so she gets angry that I have to wake her up to get her wherever she needs to go. Um... Liv wants to be tucked in. Marty used to always do it. She now doesn't have anyone to say to be safe to at work. Um, That was something she always said at 9 o'clock. Be safe, Daddy. Come home. I love you. She doesn't have that to say anymore. She's like, what do I do? Uh, Just say it in general. Just full-blown encompass. Um... She's worried about the squad. She's worried about the guys who are there, who are pupils. Um, I don't know. It's strange. All of it. Like I said, we're just waiting for a new norm. If it ever hits. Yeah. I guess it's just more getting used to what is so that it becomes normal rather than the situation changing any more than it already has. Um, so, so that's what, that's what this money is going for your donations today. And, uh, we want to thank you so much for that. So is there anything else (laughs) before I start really boohooing here? (laughs) Is there anything else? Do you guys have anything that you want to say or share or? I I just hope everyone recognizes the strength of, of, of Brittany and Stephanie, um, you know, they were thrown into a tragic event. You know, they lost loved ones way too soon. And not only do that, they do that with 15, 20 troopers showing up to your house every day and being a part of things. And, you know, things you've never thought you'd have to think about, now you do. Um, and they've handled it well. I mean, they've handled it great, and it should be commended. I mean, you know, I, I'd say they both handle it differently. Um, they both have a different tact, but, I mean, Without a doubt, you see that they want the best interest of their husband and their his their legacy out there, mm-hmm. and to make sure their children know that. You know, even being here today, it, it's 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 letting the legacy be there. And maybe not. I understand there's financial reasons behind this, but it's also awareness of what occurred and the, like, the devastation that comes of it. I mean, we may not directly say it, but you know, the fact she's sitting up here and talking about this, and you hear the pain and the loss, like maybe that brings some awareness to people, and they that they can think before they act and maybe see the big picture of what could happen. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's terrible. It's a tragedy. Right. You know, right. two guys did everything right that night, acted self- selflessly in every way, and 
you know, they, they didn't get to go home. And these are these are both guys who who weren't just troopers, as if you could ever say that anyway, because I know I, I can't even imagine what you all go through um, to get to where you are. But, um, you know, even um, Brandon was he was a fire chief. I mean, these were men dedicated to service. It, it was never enough for them. I mean, as Stephanie just told us, it just it was never enough. You just keep giving and giving and giving until you pay the ultimate sacrifice. Um, and so I, I, we do. We, we applaud you for being here, and we thank you so much. And um, maybe we can end on something a little lighter, Kip. Do you think, could you play a little something for yeah. us before yeah, no we problem. go? No problem. That'd be great. Um, While he's getting that, let's give it up. I honestly didn't even know that I was gonna play today. I, I, you know, for me it was, um, I, I travel around with a little travel guitar and I don't know, I, I guess I just, you know, I don't want any of this to be about me. Um, but you were really instrumental in, in, in getting this put together and, and this is also streaming on Kip's site if you're watching on XTUs and if you're, vice versa so we're all kind of streaming it so it's not about you but it's we appreciate you for being here and this is how we appreciate you by asking you to play for us <laughs> yeah I just I just hope that um, people that uh, have been watching this um, like I said you know we do a lot of talking in our society these days we love to talk and um, you know Talking just wears me out. Um, I'm about action, and um, I just uh, I appreciate what you guys do so much. And I say that with no, uh, yeah, all the the genuine feelings I can have to say that, because um, I know what goes into it. And it's kind of like these two guys that lost their life, like they were doing two things that were to protect people and what could happen to someone else, bystanders, and that's what y'all do every day. And then that never gets talked about. So I get really frustrated about that. So yeah, I appreciate y'all. And if you're watching this, a dollar, two dollars, twenty dollars, five dollars, whatever you can, just something, because it'll add up and it'll make a difference. Just one of those words just gets thrown around Like a Jack and Coke sitting on a bar Baby, it gets watered down I ain't gonna say it I ain't gonna lie If you wanna know the truth I will feel about you tonight If you were my last breath I just wanna hold you but last night I hell on wheels and want to drive you like I stole you. If you were my last shot, last shot of whiskey, press it to my lips, take a little sip, swirl you round and round and round and then shoot you down. Baby, let me look at you and see just what I got. If you were my cherished damn, I'd tie you in a knot. If I could inhale you, baby, I'd be gone. I'd be floating round high as the Colorado sky. No smoke rings all night long. If you were my last breath. I just want to hold you But last night I hell on wheels I want to drive you like I stole you If you were my last shot 
who escape Fish it to my lips, take a little sip Swirl you round and round and round And then it shoots you down Last call, last chance, last step I was ever gonna get to take If you were my last breath I just wanna hold you Last night of hell on wheels Wanna drive you like I stole you And if you were my last shot Last shot of whiskey Brace you to my lips Take a little sip Swirl you round and around and round And then I'd shoot you down Thank you Donate